morning, team. It is Tuesday, July 6th. We hope you had an amazing 4th of July weekend. I'm Amy Kaur, and I'm joined by Kevin Van Eck, and we're live out of the Goose Island office. We've got a great episode for you today, so grab your coffee, your tea, your lemon water, if you're like me, after a crazy holiday weekend, and let's jump into the latest episode of Coffee with Amy and Kevin. Yes, good morning, Amy. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back from hopefully a fabulous holiday weekend that you had. Make sure your coffee is full. Today, we are talking about the market. So the market, it affects all of us, right? We're involved in it, we work in it every day, and we try to be good students of the market. But some of the feedback we've been hearing about the market recently from some of you has been that the market seems to be slowing down a little bit. And for some of us, that's creating a little bit of panic. So today, we are going to really take a hard look at what's happening in the market and how we can help guide our buyers and sellers continuing through the rest of 2021, regardless of what happens in the market. That's right, Kevin. And I know we were talking earlier and kind of laughing about it because as agents, when we're crazy busy, we always want a moment to have a break. And then when that slowdown happens, which it always does, there's always natural breaks in the market. What do we do? We freak out because suddenly it feels slower and we think we're never going to do another deal again, right? But we want to talk a little bit about the cyclical nature of our market. And I know, you know, with the pandemic, it was crazy, 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 and it's been so busy. But now, guess what we're seeing right now? We are seeing a normal summer market. That's right. Let's think about it. And, you know, in Chicago, for example, and it may be slightly different in different areas, whether you're on the West Coast or the East Coast. But I know that in Chicago, what we usually see is kind of right after the new year, a really solid and fast spring market. And then what happens? We start seeing a bit of a slowdown as we hit the summer market, particularly July and August. And so that, my friends, is what we're starting to see. And it's really quite normal. And let's think about it. Oftentimes people, and I know I'm going to enjoy it hopefully soon, are thinking about vacation. We've got kids who are in summer camp. We've just got a lot going on because we take advantage of the best time of year in Chicagoland. So we need to recognize that this isn't something that we should be concerned about. It is just our normal summer flow of market activity. The other thing that I want us to think about, and I know it comes up often, is so many of us tend to get PTSD in regards to the 2008 market that we all experienced. But we have to remember that the market conditions today are incredibly different from the market conditions that we had seen in 2008 when the market essentially fell apart, right? We are seeing some really great appreciation going on in our markets, but I don't think we are in any sense of a bubble. I don't think we are in any sort of fear of things going badly moving forward as it pertains to real estate. You know, the financial environment was so different in 2008 in relation to where it's at today. When we look at mortgages and the way in which we are approaching making sure people can afford homes, we're looking at it far differently. And the people who are purchasing are extremely qualified. So let's forget 2008 and let's not be afraid that that market is going to repeat itself. Let's enjoy the fact that we are in a strong market. We actually have a moment to breathe this summer because I can guarantee you as we hit fall, we're probably going to get really busy again. Yes, Amy, that's right. I mean, we need to look at the seasonality that's in our markets, right? Because we understand how seasonality works and not panic when things follow what the normal cycle is. And then, of course, forgetting as much as we can about 2008. So such great advice. I think looking at what's happened over the pandemic for the last 16 months or so is really important, too. And we know it's impacted the market in ways that we've talked about, like second homes and people looking for more space. But really looking at now what consumers are doing because of the pandemic and how it relates to what's happening in the market and potentially slowing down this summer. So for the last 16 months, people haven't been able to travel, see family, do things they would normally be doing, and they're all doing it right now. So if they were focused on moving or purchasing a new home or selling a property, now their focus has been diverted to doing the things that they enjoy. And in fact, this past weekend with the 4th of July, supposedly is one of the biggest travel days that we've ever had in the United States, whether it's by car or by plane, one of the biggest travel days, and that's indicative of this attention shift away from buying and selling into enjoying their lives again. 
So it's important to take this into account because understanding how buyers and sellers are acting and behaving is what drives the market. You're right, Kevin. And the one thing that I want to touch on now is talking a little bit more about the buyer mentality. And I know so many of you out there talk about how you're fatigued. But if you think you're tired, think about all of those buyers out there who've been in the market, who are battling it out against one another and probably in situations of multiple offers over and over again, losing out on homes, you know, feeling like they're really having to push their comfort zone on pricing in order to actually win a property. You know, these buyers are tired. And so I think a number of them, you know, given what Kevin had just said, I think some of them are choosing to kind of take a mental break. It's summertime, the world is, has opened back up. And I think they're taking a pause. Many of them are taking a pause on, unless they have to be in a place or they need to buy. They may be waiting it out for the next few months and then exploring what the fall market looks like. So think about that as you are you know, enjoying these next couple of months. I really feel like we are going to see a strong fall market. But you know, these buyers uh, you know, also have questions. And I think this is a really important thing for you to think about. I know that some agents have, have asked, you know, are we in a housing bubble? Because a lot of our buyers are getting concerned about paying too much for a home and then resenting it when they go to sell. Here's the thing, you know, if you have a buyer who's going to purchase something and then they're going to sell in a year, are they in a bit of a bubble or may they not necessarily make their money back? Possibly if we end up seeing a little dip, but we have to really think about most buyers. Most are choosing to invest in a property for at least five years, some even longer. And odds are that it's going to be a good investment. That's also because, you know, the loans that they are getting, they're usually having to put at least 10% down. So they're already building in equity. And from somebody who is a specialist at Morgan Stanley, they actually really feel like we're gonna to continue to see appreciation because we are still looking at an imbalance of supply and demand. There's still gonna be a strong amount of demand and we still are slow on the supply side. At some point that is going to normalize, but I don't think that there is any concern that at some point in the next five to 10 years, we are going to see a major dip in appreciation. So I think for the most part as a buyer, they're in a good spot. Yes, it's competitive, but there is an opportunity to get in, get a great house and they are going to benefit long-term. And the last thing as it pertains to buyers and them thinking whether it's a great time you know, to move forward in the marketplace, we have to also recognize that rents have been increasing year over year for the last 20 years. So odds are it still is more affordable for them to purchase a home than to actually rent something of the same exact size, make, and model in whatever neighborhood they're looking at. So the most important thing is make sure that you think about the buyer's mentality. The fact that maybe they're taking a little bit of a pause right now, but as more inventory comes into the market into the fall and winter, we are going to see them coming back in. And you just need to be ready for it. You need to be making sure that you're able to counsel them. So in July and August, I will tell you, you know, take some of your rest because they're going to need you to be their biggest cheerleader as they come back in and they want to create success in the marketplace. You're going to be the person to help them do that. Really good advice, Amy, taking a breather. And then also I love putting ourselves in our client's shoes. So let's do that with sellers now, putting ourselves in our seller's place. Now, what happens sometimes? We leverage our value by saying that we are experts and we know how the market works. And then we get frustrated when sellers think they know more than us. And we also get frustrated sometimes, look inward right now, get frustrated sometimes when we have to spend a lot of time explaining the why to sellers. Well, we can't have it both ways. And that's happening right now. Put yourself in a seller's shoes where all they're reading and hearing in the news, newspapers, articles, online, from their neighbors, all they're hearing is about how hot the market is, how it's a seller's market, how things are flying for over list price. And we're somewhat to blame for that as well because we're marketing ourselves sometimes about how quickly we're selling properties for 110% of list price with 37 offers. So we're actually setting the expectation or setting the newsreel that sellers are seeing. And then we're having to come in and temper their expectations. And that's the key here. First, our job is to educate. Our job as the experts, as we say our value is, is to help educate those 
that are buying or selling. So specifically with sellers, what that means is our job is to educate. When we're talking about pricing and putting their home on the market, we know when things are overpriced. And we also know that overpricing, no matter what's happening in the market, no matter what's happening with demand, pricing, overpricing will mean that the property won't sell. So when a seller comes to us and they want to test the market, when they want to push the limits, we can't blame them. That's all they're hearing and seeing when they see 37 people waiting outside of their neighbor's open house. That's all they're thinking when they read the headlines. And who doesn't want to sell for more? Everybody. So it's really important that we take the data, resources, and information we have and the stories we have whether it's with our clients or other agents' clients or stories we've read about the cautionary tales in overpricing. And right now, this is a great market where it really is impossible to underprice a property simply because of demand. And so sharing the stories where actually by creating more exposure, properties are selling for more than what they would have had they been testing the market or possibly sell, even selling it all. So our job is to educate sellers. Our job is to make sure that they put themselves in the best position to make a decision where they are able to move and doing that without blame, doing it by putting ourselves in our seller's shoes, not becoming frustrating, frustrated, educating them on what's happening in the market so they can get to where they want to go. Really great points, Kevin. So here are the takeaways for all of you today. The first is enjoy your summer. If you're slowing down a little bit, we're not saying stop and don't do anything productive for your business, but also take a deep breath and try and enjoy some of the most beautiful time of the year. Uh, and just, you deserve it. You've worked super hard. The second thing that we want you to really do is make sure to take the time after you're done watching this video and search online and use some of your resources to take a look at the data for your hyper local market. Take a look at month supply of inventory, homes for sale, closed transactions. Make sure you know that information, but also take a look at a resource like Keeping Current Matters. There's some really great information that talks about what we're seeing nationwide. And I think it is really valuable when you're talking with buyers and you're talking with sellers. You are the expert. Make sure that you are using stories about things you've seen in the marketplace to help them understand and how they need to position themselves into the remainder of the year. And be ready. I think we're going to expect a great and busy fall and into winter market. So we're excited about it, but make sure you enjoy yourselves. You deserve it. You definitely do. Thank you for joining us today. Make sure, like Amy said, that in addition to searching for resources on your local market, check out the email. Make sure you click the links. Make sure you download what's available in the email where you click to this episode of Coffee From. Thank you for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. Make it a great day and we'll see you soon. Bye team. We'll see you next Tuesday.